All right, back with you, San Diego Sports Leader. It is the Mighty 1090, Darren Smith, live from Radio Row. Our coverage all week long brought to you by Renovation Realty. We renovate, we sell, you profit, and, of course, by Sport Clips, where it's great to be a guy. Normally, we talk with Brian Dutcher. He's the associate head coach, the head coach in waiting at San Diego State. Normally, on Tuesdays, Dutch good enough to join us here on a Monday, and especially after the week. I know, Dutch, I sound like a skipping record here, but just another ho-hum 2-0 week for the Aztecs, huh? Yeah, really, really fun. You know, to go on the road and, and win two road games, that's the hardest thing to do in any sport in college athletics. And to come away with two road wins, especially the last one at Utah State in such a hostile environment was really, really rewarding. You guys are now up to fifth in the country. I saw the the rankings come out a little bit earlier here. So you continue to climb upwards there. Uh, how does I mean, back into the top five now for San Diego State. I mean, two times in a couple of years, this is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, unexpected. You know, I would say even the coaching staff, even though we have great faith in our team, uh, if you were to tell us we would have the 18-1 uh, and one and rank fifth in the country at this point, we'd say you're crazy. So the kids have performed well. They've, they've obviously overachieved uh, from what many many's expectations were on them, but uh, uh, they keep getting better. That's the key. We don't want to stay where we're at. We want to continue to get better. I want to... No disrespect intended here to Xavier Thames. I, I mean, I thought he was a good player, you know, and, and I mean that in every sense of the word. I mean, he's a good player. I had no idea that he could be this kind of player. I mean, a career-high 31. At times, Dutch, you know, I, he, he seems like he carries you out there on the court. I'm sure you thought he was a good player. Did you know he was this good of a player? You know what? Uh, I knew he was good, uh, but he has exceeded expectations. I mean, uh, he has put us on his back and carried us this year. Uh, no better evident than at Utah State where I said to uh, Teddy Leitner after the game when I talked with him, interviewed with him, uh, if there was a better performance by an Aztec guard, I'd like to see it. Hmm. I mean, I've been here 15 years and put up 31 points in that environment to make big shots, hard shots. Uh, he was incredible. Yeah, and I mean, if there were an MVP award in basketball, I, I certainly think that you might give it to Xavier Thames. Where did this come from, though? I mean, was there any any evidence to suggest in the past that he could turn into this type of player? You know, he's shown obviously shown uh, uh, glimpses of it, but uh, he's been bit by the injury bug the last two years. You know, he had the bad back uh, last year, and he just never he missed games with it. It was bothering him, and he was playing hurt and. The year before that, he tweaked his knee late in the year, and so we're seeing a healthy Xavier Thames, and uh, he stepped up to the challenge. I mean, he had Chase and Jamal last year, and like good point guards, he got them shots, he moved the ball, and he's doing the same now, but he's taking the big shot instead of Jamal or Chase this year. Was this the plan? I mean, going back to, to the early portion of the season, going back to where you guys were, were getting set for the season, was this the idea? I mean, was this by design here that you thought Xavier Thames would lead your team in scoring? We knew he'd lead our team. We didn't know he'd lead us in scoring. Obviously, uh, you go into the year and you have expectations. You think, well, we're going to get points from here. J.J. does this. Skyler does that. You know, we have this, this key piece or that key piece. But then the team kind of determines what route you take as an offense. And when Xavier continues to make big shots and timely shots, then obviously we shift our attention to run more things for Xavier to put him in positions where he's the most dangerous guy on the floor. And, to X's credit, not only did he have 31 points, he had four assists and zero turnovers. Hmm. So he takes care of the ball. He, he's made good decisions. He'll start to see more and more double teams. And I think you saw late in the game he fouled Josh Davis for a couple little bounce passes for layups. And he will continue to do that. He will not force his, ish, force his game, but he'll take what the defense gives him. We're talking to Brian Dutcher. He's the associate head coach, head coach in waiting. San Diego State now up to fifth in the country, 74-69 at Utah State over the weekend. So what would you think of the building? What would you think of the environment? Oh, it was really, really fun to be in there. And, you know, first time to Kansas, that was incredible. And Utah State, you watch it on TV all those years. And first time to go in there, and it was everything they said it would be. The, the student section was really, really loud and into the game. And it was uh, as fine a college basketball environment as you're ever going to see. You know, you mentioned Kansas. You, you know, you mentioned Utah State. I mean, both of those schools, both of those programs – had these ridiculous numbers here about you know they, they don't lose at, at home. Both of them, I think, were top three in the country if we're going to take it back you know, six, seven, eight years or so. Uh, with that in mind, I mean, is that something that's ever discussed here, how well a team plays at home? Oh, absolutely. We let the team know what uh, the opposing 
uh, record is of that team that uh, I think Utah State was something like 134 and 12 mm-hmm. over the last seven years. And uh, our kids like that challenge. What team wouldn't to, to face a challenge like that to say, wow, this is how many they've lost over all these years, and let's go in there, let's try to be the next one on that list. And uh, to our kids' credit, uh, they fought through and they, they got a, a hard, hard, hard road victory. So you dangle that stuff in front of them? You, you let them know exactly what it is, 134 and 12? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> they, you know, it, you want to be challenged as a player and as an athlete. You want to say, uh, you, you don't want to use that as fear, you want to use that as motivation. And you want to say, this is going to be hard, this is going to be a tough environment. And uh, uh, it takes a special team to win in here. And so when we got the victory, obviously our kids felt very good about that. And now we have a week off, Darren, leading to Colorado State on Saturday, and we've got to do some things to continue to improve our basketball team. Did you get heckled? You know what, Darren, I'm sure we did. (laughs) I don't hear it once the game starts, so it's all just kind of – dull noise to me. I don't hear that good anyway. I'm hard of hearing, so <laughs> I, I'm extra hard of hearing on the road, but I'm sure our players heard some things that they would probably chuckle about. Yeah? Anything you can share with us? Not that I'm going to ask them today, and if I can get anything <laughs> good, I'll share it with you next week, but I you know, we, I did not ask them after the game if anything was, like Coach Holly says, they're going to personalize it sometimes. You've got to make it dull noise and not respond and, and just play beyond that. So he kind of gives them a little heads up beforehand that uh, some of it's going to be personalized and and that you just have to have a thick skin and play through it. One of your players, I guess, winked it at somebody because I heard that on television, one of their student section guys, somebody was screaming, don't wink at me, don't wink at me. Any idea who that was? I have no idea. (laughs) I have no idea. I'm going to find out, though. That's pretty funny. It was pretty funny, too. I said, boy, they're having a fun time here. We're talking to Brian Dutch here at San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. From a uh, strategic standpoint, Dutch, and I think you maybe had addressed this with Leitner after the game, but uh, you guys are up three late in this game, 16 seconds to go. Utah State inbound in the basketball. I I thought we were – I thought you guys had made it a a habit of fouling in that situation. Which we wanted to do. We talked in the timeout. With 16 seconds to go, it was too early. We wanted to work at somewhere under 10 seconds and then foul. But uh, Josh Davis and J.J., once they got to that point, they were on a couple of guards that were looked like they were going to go into the shooting motion. So I can understand their apprehension of go ahead and grabbing that guy, and especially if he goes up into the shot as they grab him. You don't want to give him free free throws. And so I think Josh maybe had a small opportunity to commit a foul, but J.J. definitely, when he got on his guy, that guy looked like he was going to go up and shoot the ball. So J.J. Uh, was very cautious to not foul him. And then the kid hit an incredible shot over two of us. But it kind of reinforces us as a coaching staff that when given the opportunity, we want to foul. We wanted to foul in that case, but we didn't get it executed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know exactly the play that you're talking about. Because you could see that J.J., you could see O'Brien kind of wanted to get in there, but he was worried about giving him three free throws. Absolutely. You don't want to foul a shooter, and it looked like, The guy gave a little head and shoulder like he was going to go up into the shop, and he took one extra dribble. We're talking to Brian Dutcher, San Diego sports leader. It's the Mighty 1090. So you uh, you don't have two games this week. You now have a little bit of rest. Uh, Comes at a good time here to not have a game during the week? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we're going to give the kids a day off. We're not taking the day off. We're going to practice today. And then tomorrow we're going to hit the road recruiting and give them a day off and hopefully rest our legs a little bit, and uh, we'll tweak what we have to tweak both offensively and defensively uh, this week to try to improve ourselves uh, going into the, uh, into the next portion of our conference schedule. And that's Colorado State coming up. Now you're starting to get into that portion of the schedule where you're playing teams for the second time. What's different about facing a team for the second time in a season? Uh, you know, we, you can't say, well, because our game plan worked the first time, we'll just go back to what we did. We have to continue to watch tape, study the other team, see what changes they've made, and uh, be willing to adjust our first our first game plan in order to play more efficiently the second time. Uh, Colorado State, obviously, is a tough out for us in the fact where they shoot more free throws than we do, and we shoot a lot of free throws. So uh, we're going to be concerned about guarding them, not putting them on the foul line where they have so much success. Well, Dutch, uh, always a pleasure. We thank you, as always, for the time. Another 2-0 and week. Aztecs ranked fifth in the country. Colorado State coming up Saturday at 4 o'clock, a game that you can listen to right on the Mighty 1090. Dutch, our pleasure. Who are you, who are you picking for the Super Bowl? Uh, I think with the weather conditions, I'm going to go with the defensive team. I'm going to take Seattle. 
going to go Seattle there. But no no interest, no rooting interest one way or the other? No rooting interest. Just looking for a really good game, and I would be happy for either coach and team that wins the game. Yeah, you know, outside elements. You know, it reminds me of the game that you guys played on the aircraft carrier against Syracuse. Yeah, if the wind's blowing <laughs> like that, they're all going to have trouble throwing the ball. <laughs> Dutch, have a great week. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Darren.